Let's introduce MLChem and MLDSA. These two asymmetric or public key algorithms can be classified as post-quantum cryptography, PQC. To describe these algorithms, we need to define a polynomial ring, which is denoted by R sub Q. Q is a prime modulus. We can define this polynomial ring in terms of the integers mod Q and the polynomial x to the power of n plus 1. n is a constant. And we're going to set that constant equal to 256. So n is equal to 256. This is 2 to the power of 8. And we can also write this in hexadecimal notation. We will prefix this with 0x. So this indicates that we're dealing with hexadecimal notation. And in hexadecimal, this is 1, 0, 0. Now, why is that the case? Well, it's because 256 is 16 squared. So that's why we have 1, 0, 0. And the reason we are using this definition over here is because we need to define a matrix A. So this matrix has entries which are elements of the polynomial ring R sub Q. And this matrix has dimensions K by L. We have a K by L matrix. And all of the entries in this matrix, they are elements of this polynomial ring. So now that we have these definitions over here, and we've set n equal to this value, we can introduce MLChem and MLDSA. So first, let's consider FIPS 203. FIPS means Federal Information Processing Standard. FIPS 203 is a document which specifies how to implement MLChem. This is MLChem. ML means module lattice based. Chem means key encapsulation mechanism. So FIPS 203 specifies how to implement the module lattice based key encapsulation mechanism. So the purpose of this algorithm is to perform key establishment. And we're also going to consider FIPS 204. So that is Federal Information Processing Standard 204. Now this document specifies how to implement MLDSA. So we have MLDSA. So this is Module Lattice-Based Digital Signature Algorithm. And as the name suggests, this is a digital signature algorithm. So both of these algorithms, they are module lattice-based algorithms. And that is the reason they are classified as PQC, or post-quantum cryptography. We could use alternative uh, names for this. We could also call them quantum safe or quantum resistant. Now, let's also consider some security models. The security model for MLChem is indistinguishability under adaptive chosen ciphertext attack. We can write that as IND for indistinguishability and CCA2. Now this means adaptive chosen ciphertext attack. And if instead of two, uh, we put a one over here, that means non-adaptive chosen ciphertext attack. So this is the security model. And the security model for MLDSA is strong existential unforgeability under chosen message attack. And we can write that as S-U-F-C-M-A. 
So this is strong existential unforgeability under chosen message attack. And in other words, we can say that MLDSA is strongly existentially unforgeable under chosen message attack. So here we have uh, the FIPS documents, which outline how to implement these algorithms. We have the names of these algorithms, and we also have the security models. Now, let's introduce some values for these parameters uh, at the top. So we're interested in this modulus Q, and we're also interested in K and L. This constant N is 256. So this constant uh, is the same for both of these algorithms. But Q is different. So first, let's consider the modulus Q for ML chem. This modulus Q is equal to 3,329. This is a prime number. And it is equal to 2 to the power of 8 times 13 plus 1. And we can write that in hexadecimal notation as well. So we can write that with this prefix, 0x. That means we're dealing with hexadecimal notation. And that is the same as d, 0, 1. And we can also write that in binary. We'll use the prefix 0b for binary. And d, that is the same as 13. And in binary, that is 1, 1, 0, 1. And then this 0 over here, that is four zeros. So we have 0, 0, 0, 0. And then this 1 is 0, 0, 0, 1. So this is the binary representation over here. This is the hexadecimal representation. And over here, here we have the decimal representation. So this is a prime number, and it is one larger than 2 to the power of 8 times 13. So it is a prime modulus. Now, what about MLDSA? The value of Q is different. So the value of Q for MLDSA, we can write it as 8,380,417. So that is the decimal representation. And we can write this in terms of powers of 2. So this is 2 to the power of 23 minus 2 to the power of 13 plus 1. And then we can actually factor out 2 to the power of 13. And we can see that this is 2 to the power of 13 times 2 to the power of 10 minus 1. And then we have to add this 1 over here. So we're just factoring out 2 to the power of 13. And 2 to the power of 10 minus 1, that is 1 less than 2 to the power of 10. So this is 1,023. And we can break that down into its prime factors as well. So we can write this as 2 to the power of 13 times 3 times 11 times 31. And then we have to add 1 over here. And we can also write this in hexadecimal. We use the prefix 0x to indicate that we're dealing with hexadecimal notation. And that is 7FE001. And let's write this out in binary. So we'll use the prefix 0b for binary. Now 7, that is the same as 0, 1, 1, 1. F, that is 1, 1, 1, 1. E is 1, 1, 1, 0. And then we have two of these zeros. So that means we have 0, 0, 0, 0, then 0, 0, 0, 0. And then finally, we have 0, 0, 0, 1. So you can see that I've grouped these bits into groups of four. And this corresponds to 7, then we have F, and then E, and then we have 0, 0, 1. So that is the binary representation. This is the hexadecimal uh, representation. And here we have the decimal representation. So these are both prime numbers, and they are used as the modulus in this definition for a polynomial ring. So the integers mod q, they are coefficients for these polynomials.
you can see that this Q is different for MLChem and MLDSA, but both of these values are prime numbers. And you can see different ways of expressing uh, these prime numbers. So now we have Q, and we've also defined this constant N. Now let's consider these parameters, K and L. So these parameters are really important because they are going to be used to define the parameter sets. So both MLCAM and MLDSA have three parameter sets, which are specified by the values of K and L. So let's have a look at these parameter sets. So first, for ML chem, we're going to have three values that come after chem. So the first value that you might see is 1024. And then the next value you might see is 768. And then finally, you might also see 512. So we're going to understand what these values actually mean. 1024, that is 2 to the power of 8 times 4. Or you could also write this as 2 to the power of 10. And this one over here, 768, that is 2 to the power of 8 times 3. And then finally over here we have 2 to the power of 8 times 2. So this value over here, 2, 3, 4, that is k. So this final value over here, that is k. So for ML chem, k is equal to L. So we're only dealing with square matrices. We have k by k matrices. And k can take on three possible values. It can be 2, 3, or 4. So we have 2, 3, or 4. And that, is, that information is specified in this number. So if you have ML chem 1024, that is telling you that you're dealing with a 4 by 4 matrix. And if you have 768, that's telling you you're dealing with a 3 by 3 matrix. And if there is 512 present after ML chem, then that is specifying that we're dealing with a 2 by 2 matrix. Now, there, there are also some other parameters which are specified in these parameter sets. But the values of K and L are used as the names for these parameter sets. And it's important to know which parameter set you're using because that determines both the performance and the security strength. ML Chem 1024 has the highest security strength out of these three parameter sets. And it also has the worst performance. So it's a trade-off between performance and security strength. So by default, if you want the highest security strength, you want to use ML Chem 1024. But if performance is an issue, then you can switch and you can use ML Chem 768. So that is the medium level over here. And then for the best performance and for the lowest security uh, level, you can use ML Chem 512. So there are also three security levels for MLDSA. So let's have a look at them. So for MLDSA, we have three values that can follow DSA. So the first value is 8, 7, then the next one is 6, 5, and then finally we have 4, 4. And you should read these numbers separately. So you shouldn't read this as 87, 65, and 44. You should read them separately as 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 4. That's because these are the values of K and L. So in other words, you can, write, you can think of this as K, comma, L. These are the dimensions of the matrix. So this lowest security level is describing a 4 by 4 matrix. So over here we have a 4 by 4 matrix. Now, that's just like the case that we have over here. So for ML Chem 1024, we're also dealing with a 4 by 4 matrix. But keep in mind that the modulus is different. So over here we have a much smaller modulus, and over here we have a much larger modulus. That's that prime number Q. And this is a square matrix, but these ones, they are rectangular matrices. So here we have a 6 by 5 matrix, 
and an 8 by 7 matrix. MLVSA 8.7 has the highest uh, security strength, and it also has the lowest performance. So if performance is an issue, then you can go down to MLVSA 6.5. And that's going to give you better performance, but you will have to trade off uh, with a bit of that security strength. So you always have to uh, consider what application you're using this for. Is performance more important or is security strength more important? That's why we have different parameter sets. We have these three parameter sets to choose from. So in summary, in this video, we introduced MLChem and MLDSA. That is module lattice-based key encapsulation mechanism and module lattice-based digital signature algorithm. These are respectively specified in FIPS 203 and FIPS 204. And in this video, we investigated some constants and parameters which are important for implementing these algorithms. These uh, constants n and q are really important, and we also have k and l. These parameters are used to specify uh, these parameter sets. So k and l, they're not the only parameters that vary with these parameter sets. There are also some other parameters that uh, need to be changed in these implementations but they are the most important in terms of the naming convention. So now we have an explanation for where these names come, come from. So these are the names for the parameter sets of MLChem and MLDSA.